Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Kennedy Center, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Millennium Stage, where every night of the year at 6 p.m. we present a free performance with the ongoing support of the Target Corporation. And when you're not able to be here with us in person, you can join us online at kennedy-center.org, where we broadcast each night's performance live over the web, as well as making all of our past performances available on demand through our internet archives. Now, tonight is a very special night for us here at the Kennedy Center because this performance marks the beginning of four days of celebrating and re-examining the legacy of Marvin Gaye's classic recording, What's Going On. Young people from across the city and across the country have come together to share their work and their perspectives on the question, what's going on now? Through their art, they will contrast Marvin's then to their now and we're excited to, he to hear what they have to say. Now, in your program tonight, you'll see an insert that explains this extraordinary youth digital media and arts campaign. It lets you know about all the activities and performances that will be taking place this week from the Millennium Stage to the Concert Hall Stage. But right now, we are thrilled to present Letters to Marvin, the Soulful Revolution, featuring the DC Youth Slam Team. All right. Let's do that again. We almost got there. Featuring the DC Youth Slam Team. <laughs> and the Words, Beats, and Life Youth DJs. And now will you please welcome to the stage the fabulous Holly Bass, the director of tonight's program. Thank you, Garth. And thank you all for coming out. Um, it has been such a privilege and honor to be able to work on this um, really exciting program and to explore all the issues and ideas that are in the music. But before I talk about the show, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Tucker, who is one of the coaches of the DCU Slam Team, to tell you a little bit more about what they do. Hi, everybody. So my name is Jonathan Tucker. I'm one of the coaches of the DC Youth Poetry Slam Team. We are a program of a nonprofit organization called Split This Rock, and we provide a year-long program for young people in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia to explore their talent using spoken word poetry. We teach poetry writing and performance, and we take a group of students to Brave New Voices every summer. It's in California. It is the National Youth Poetry Slam. And so these kids are competing all year to try to make it onto the team. And so the ones that you're going to see here performing today, they've made it through the competition and through the final competition. And now all of them are coming with us to California to represent our area at this national competition. It's going to be lots of fun. They also do a lot of events here in the city. Um, we have a open mic every single month for young people. We have a poetry slam, which is a competition using poetry every single month for young people. And every Tuesday, we have a writing workshop at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library. All these programs are open to everyone in the city, and we encourage more and more people to come out and sort of see how spoken word can change themselves and change their communities. It's a great program. And right now, we're currently starting something new where we're starting slam teams at almost every high school in the city in order to bring them all together for this thing called Louder Than a Bomb. Louder than some of you may have heard about it. Some of the, the young people who are participating in it are in the audience right now. Uh, we have a movie film screening of Louder Than a Bomb coming up on May 15th. It's a fundraiser. We're trying to raise funds in order to put these programs on. Um, so please check that out. We have flyers and stuff. We'll be passing them out if you want more information. It's also available online if you're on Facebook or stuff like that. DC Youth Slam is the Twitter hashtag, whatever. DC Youth Slam, check it out. It's lots of fun. Um, but y'all are going to see some amazingly talented kids today. Uh, giving you their own words, their own poetry, um, speaking their own stories for you. Uh, so it's a privilege, it's a pleasure to see. Uh, I hope you all will enjoy what you see. Thank you, Jonathan. And it really is, you can, give, you can give Jonathan love. I mean, he works tirelessly, he's so committed. He himself is a fantastic poet, but he's so committed to giving young people a platform for their voices to be heard. And it's kind of cliche, but it's true. We don't listen to our young. And if you think about um, the What's Going On album and the lyrics and the messages that are in that album, if you play them today, they're just as relevant. You know, how much progress have we made with ecology? How much progress have we made um, fighting against violence and war? 
you know, so it's really important. So one of the things we did, um, the Youth Slam team meets on Saturday afternoon. So these are already, these are like the kids who are already in so many extracurricular activities and clubs and doing all this. And then they come on their Saturdays and work on writing poetry and performing. We listened to the album. We talked about what are the issues or what does this mean when he's talking about flying high? He's not talking about catching an airplane, you know, or when he's talking about, you know, coming back from Vietnam, how do we compare that to soldiers coming back today? So it was a real um, kind of consciousness raising session. And then we also talked about the beauty of the music itself. And we thought, why don't we, because there are other groups who are working on, you know, maybe a specific issue or, or um, an idea in the album, why don't we actually try to pay homage to the album itself and write poems that are connected to each track? So what we're going to do right now is kind of take you on a, a listening journey through all nine tracks of Marvin Gaye's masterpiece, What's Going On. And this is called Letters to Marvin. Brother, brother, there's far too many of you dying. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Father, father, we don't need to escalate. Marvin, I've listened to you dream. Hop, skip, and jump away from revolution if they only paid attention. Really listen to what you were saying. Maybe if you were two shades lighter, I've hummed. While you stood in the truth of time, there must be nothing scarier than a black man with his eyes open. Raising my hands, Hollering, where has the blue skies gone? Drenched in red, white, and blue, you'd be happy to know now. Then when soldiers come home, we say thank you for doing what we wouldn't. We say thank you for doing what we wouldn't. We have a black president now, a beautiful and intelligent man, if they let him. But our city streets have changed even since I've been around. Chocolate cities become a little more caramel, half and half to whipped. The stars have the real bucks now. And I wonder, what happens to the old after we pave over it? It'll show face with time, so we will show face with time. It will be a new kind of revolution that will change the world. So lay me back first in grass and let's play I spy with the skies. Can you see what I see? Billions of stars I pray to every night. Marvin, I've listened to you dream. A hop, skip, and a jump away from revolution. This time, I hope they listen. If not to the album, then to the clouds. Hey baby, what you know good? I'm just getting back, but you knew I would. Boy as hell. Dear Marvin, do you remember when Chuck Brown ain't had no street where he could walk on and blast go-go music until the passerbys go deaf with DC's funky heartbeat pulsating with the rhythms of the average day-to-day -day life of living in Chocolate City before Chipotle and love became hot spots and when Berry Farms used to be a middle-class neighborhood where blacks from the South used to migrate to when the racism got too hot for the souls to handle, just like those buildings being burnt down to nothing in 1968, when our people got fed up with our leaders being shot up and now more young brothers and sisters are slowly telling God through the grapevine that you were wrong and our parents were wrong and our grandparents were wrong because DC is nothing but a gentrified hell with monuments to mask up the fact that our schools are underperforming and the Smithsonian that tells tourists 99.9% .9 of what our teachers fail to teach us but what their teachers teach them Marvin you see 
DC ain't what it used to be. Because back then, people used to unify despite the color of their eyes on the same streets that our ancestors built, built, even though some of the backs are bled for them. And now we have Georgetown and Columbia Heights, Tilly Town and Congress Heights, DuPont Circle and Anacostia, where color lines are brick walls with padlocked doors, where the only way to get through is if your pockets were all about the Benjamins and Franklin wasn't even president. He just invented electricity, which now more inner city people in D.C. are struggling to keep the lights on because Pepco somehow manages to slip hidden charges in the bill. And Marvin, if you want to be for real, come back to D.C. and you'll see. Sincerely, me. Dear Marvin, I hear you were afraid of flying. What was it that made your hands shake and eyelids hold tight against each other? Was it the lift and head tilt back? The heaviness of life pushing against your eardrums? Maybe it was that you didn't want to sit next to some guy who might sneeze on your nice leather jacket. And trust me, honey, that would bother me too. Or was it the realization that clouds are not solid? tangible, attainable, that the full, thick white could not hold you, could not itself be held. Maybe it was that crazy expanse of sky, how small our constructions and achievements seem from up there, the ability to look nearly far enough to see the end of life blurring along the haze of horizon. I know a boy who was afraid of flying, just like you. It is because he has always believed that he will fall, because he is terrified of feeling small, and he has fallen. And he has felt himself fold inwards on his insecurities, small. So many times. Just like you. Dear Marvin, I hear you said you were close to God. Even in an old video, I can see your alcohol-slicked eyes disagreeing with your torn peel of a smile. I can hear your nose flaring a little too wide, catching up on the breath you lost to white powder clouds in your hotel room last night. I have found that look on the face of too many boys who fly just like you did. It's funny how the only kind of flight y'all are afraid of is the one that really lifts you higher. I just want to ask a question. Who really cares? To save a world in despair? Who really cares? Dear Marvin, I am a miracle. I was supposed to be anything but alive by now. The majority of my life has been spent living in holes, and being in the midst of so much darkness makes it hard to see oneself as a mold. As a pawn in oppression's favorite game, whack-a-mole, I stuck to what I knew, survival. Kept busy with the task of avoiding the hammer. No such thing as poking my head up into the lights. Risk equal death in my book. And nothing else belonged on that page, because that's all there was to it. I, I, I just want to ask a question. Who really cares? To save the world in despair. Dear Marvin, I just want to ask a question. How possible do you find it? To save a child's innocence. The sweet smell of clean hands and the vibe of a clear consciousness. Can it be spared? The eyes that, the eyes that sparkle with more light than all the stars in space and shine with the meaning of what true love is can it be spared. That in this world ruled by chaos, 
drenched in mass confusion, controlled by the hell gates of hate. Can the kid continue to remain uncorrupted? Can they continue to retain any sense of guiltlessness? I just want to ask a question. The wide-eyed happiness that sees the world as a big playground with millions of adventures that this kid is waiting to happen. Excuse me. Y'all don't have to excuse me. I just made this Saturday. <laughs> Can it be spared? I used to see this world as a big playground. Did you? Though it seems the older I get, the less I see it as a playground, the more I see it as a war zone. You see, I saw the Jungle gym turned into a prison cell. The ropes of the swings turned into nooses, and the slides simply came to personify the highs of life turning into lows. I just want to ask a question. If innocence is its own reality, its own world, one that can change this war zone back into a playground, at least through the eyes of a child, is it a world you said was destined to die. Since we all have to grow up, is it the world you said was destined to die? Since we all become some degree of corrupt, is it the world you said was destined to die? And if it is, can it be spared? Can there come a generation not indoctrinated by the schools of racism, one that eliminates class, sexism, and every form of hate in them, a generation that resurrects the playground mentality and turns it into a reality? Can they be spared? Can, they, can, can we be allowed to build our own world? I just want to ask a question. When the time comes and my innocence is completely gone, will I be able to catch the innocents who follow after me from falling into a snare of adult power struggles and world conflict. Wait, a better question would be, will I even try then? Will I have enough power to keep the innocence from dying too? Can I prevent my own from dying or is it already too late? I just want to ask a question. Am I the only one that's willing to save a world with a predetermined expiration date? With the chance of death seeming inevitable? The dying world we find in the innocence of children. Who else is up to save the children? Can they be spared? What the, what? Oh, don't go and talk about my father. Talk about my father. God is my friend. Jesus is my friend. He made this world for us to live in. I will not talk about your father if that is what you want. If you tell me that his love is ubiquitous, his arms wide enough to stretch from a crack baby in an inner city war zone to a frosty old woman too far away to know of its existence, I will believe you. Sitting before a high school desk, tempted by academics and philosophy, I will not consider the possibility for any father to exist but yours. What I cannot do is convince them to abandon their father for yours. You caught me in the way your melodies ebb and flow like sweet chocolate volcanoes, but they might need something tangible to prove that he's real. You teach us that your father is love, and love is breath, and breath is life, but they may not believe you. Had you only exchanged the word father for hope, berating everyone that shuns its existence, taking the word idealism out of vocabularies, 
I will not talk about your father in vain, nor will I roll my eyes at people who see hope in his pupils when they dilate, no. Even if I do not associate my God, my spirit, my father with Jesus, your father is my father. Your hope lingers in my cavities. Dearest Marvin, see, mercy is a mistress, is a, is, a, is a mountain, is a misfit who don't belong to no man playing dress up in God clothing, no, no. She is no church. Mercy is where God lives, outside. What we did too before choking on fumes from mankind and his tools, no. Mercy. <laughs> Mercy is in our poems. Mercy, <laughs> mercy is mankind and his tools. How we, how we took mankind and his, is in his tools. How we took, how we took his poems and, and changed and changed all of the rules. She's in the river now. She's in the river gasping for our earth, for her earth. Mercy is no playground. She, she's not in any of our promises. Mercy is in the floorboards we take for granted. Been ripped from trees for eternity. She's been ripped from trees for eternity, we've been choking on rooftops, on the embers, how we stomp on her, walk on her like permission, like go forth and prosper, not knowing where prosperity ends and pollution begins. No, no, mercy is what we step on. We stomp on like we deserve her, like mercy is a mother, a mother earth turned to miscarriage, carried across all of our promises, a carousel of promises, spinning off axis with the sun, the moon, the stars, sea, sea, she's, she's waiting, she's crying. Mercy is a woman, doesn't know if anyone will save her. But if you take care of her earth, she will show you mercy. Message from, from George Zimmerman to Marvin Gaye Sr. Dear Marvin Gaye Sr., don't feel bad. They were going to hurt us. I know he was your son, but he was asking for it the moment he gave you that gun. He was begging for his demise. Guns make us men because no one can stare it down. The metal always wins. Guns don't kill people. 
Heroes with guns killed villains James Earl Ray. That man was a true king for killing the false one, Mark David Chapman, was a hero for taking down that hippie, Roy Bryant and J.W. Millam. That till kid had it coming to him. Age doesn't mean anything. We did right. It's okay because one, they would have gotten you if you didn't do it first. Two, we did. One, they would have gotten you if you didn't do it first. Two, you saw the evil in him first, so it became your job. Three, relation doesn't matter. Evil, it's evil. Four, evil is evil. Four, never second guess because they'll end up getting you. Five, we did the world a favor. Less of them makes more of us. Six, there's no such thing as trigger happy. Trigger happy. Holy sin. De Marvin. He didn't shoot me literally, but my father shot me a long time ago. See, on my birthday, he wasn't even there. Fell more in love with green dice than the crashing sound they made against concrete center blocks than he did with the queen. You can never miss what wasn't there, but you can always caption its absence. Fabricated stories on the quest of a love for a king in a space where hearts had all are revoked and the space I'd occupy would be worthless, much like my father. God, sorry we ain't talked lately. Gotta forgive me cause things got crazy. One thing I did learn was to maintain my conscience when dudes bonds ain't honest and more, but it's hard to express them all in small silence. Regardless, I shine like gin and tonics and shut them down like onyx the third time around. Hey, yo son, check the science. Flow puts you in the trance to cause your melanin to dance. Vibrations and chants that enhance the listener's conscience. Like the secret life of plants, I lamp. Fresh from my fence to my vamps. Give it a chance. The man's got a militant stance. I'm dealing with plans to establish a sovereign nation. I'm building a land where everyone can be free. Resources can be preserved for the future we see. And this crossroads can be diverged. So, as my word is born, I'm a five percenter. Those who peep it open mic say I'm a live presenter. Needed some time to prepare. Part of my dilemma, enemies defeated. Reading, comply, and surrender. Laws been rhyming for like four or five Decembers. I remember my homies freestyling for splendor. At recess, used to only observe. Was afraid my raps would be less. Wouldn't be heard even though I knew they'd be best. Needless to say, now they know I'm a golden child and now I seize this opportunity to be molding wild versus I'm wicked. It's sorta like I was my own worst critic. Make deaf scripts and ain't had the balls to spit it. But that was my past style. This in the past now ain't with that now. People wanna get hostile. 30,000 feet ahead, but I stopped running last mile. All right, hold up. The Brahmin son, promised one. Matthew the Christ, Nabi Buddha the Sutra, a prophet who could visualize the future. Poetic Kama Sutra, soothe ya. Soldier, salute ya. Slay the J. Edgar Hoovers. Kill the fakes and intruders. Just tell me if I lose ya. Don't worry, I won't shoot ya. <laughs> A counterfeit lullaby sang so sweetly, fills the ears of a newborn baby, too young and too blind to see that the words that his mother speaks may be the last he ever hears as he sleeps. Death crept in dark shadows of the night. This innocent soul was a product of two things that have never seen the sun's light, its father. Sat over the streets of D.C. like a hurricane's horizon, holding tiny bronze soldiers in the palms of his hand to manipulate adolescent minds to no longer use the greats as idols to reflect on. No more legacies to build on, but he kept one that went back to heroin, marijuana, and crack, turning Section 8 apartments into gold mines so he could change 12-year-old pocket change for nickel bags and dimes. He controlled them with his rhymes. 
that dug into temples like a cold nine millimeter barrel locked and loaded with a number of lethal bullets. One, narcissism. Two, gluttony. Three, perversion. Four, disrespect. Five, envy. Six, lust. And I guess she was playing Russian roulette one night because she was a spirit of gyrating hips just to get a little attention. If I show my chest, I might make myself a woman. If I call myself the baddest chick, I'll be every dude's dream. I call myself princess, although I was born a queen. Her body gave shelter to every living being. Her brain was like ecosystem, but her soul was like carbon emission. It told her that her landscape wasn't good enough, so she'll turn her hills into silicone mountains. Stuff her roots under ornamental plastic, line starry eyes with charcoal to deflect the shine from her goals. They say the universe is where dreams lie and aspiration was growing tired of black rain in the cosmos. But he saw right through her. Call it love at first sight. She never knew that her whole world would change in one night. She was too young to be a mother, but she was keeping that baby. Makes you wonder how she'd raise a child with her impression of being a lady. Nine months later, Upon arrival, she'd sing a lullaby to her child. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. Everything is gonna be all right. Mommy's always gonna be by your side. Nothing is gonna harm you. The streets are your home, so you'll grow up strong, just like daddy taught you. But what these young parents failed to see was the way they lived their lives to pave the way for baby's destiny, because yeah, history will repeat. Personality is just as hereditary as blood type, and a name is never enough to save them. Dear Marvin, did anyone ever send you a news update to purgatory to let you know that your brother Frankie's war recollections have become non-fictional bedtime stories to children, whose mommies and daddies have become casualties to a war as great as the one in Afghanistan? And they'll say things like, it's happening in every living room, in every classroom, every time someone opens their mouth to tell a child that their future is bright, when in all reality, their future is just an option as long as they live their life right, when in all reality, future will never be an option unless we stop feeding our children these counterfeit lullabies. All right. So we're at the halfway point, and it seemed an appropriate time to let the DJs get some. So we've got an um, instructor from Words, Beats, and Life, RBI, DJ RBI, Ron Brown. And today we have Anthony Hill, Javier Garay, and Virgil Smoot. And we're just, and Isaiah Payne. And we're going to let the DJs get some. So they're going to each do a little solo mix for you. And then we'll continue with the rest of our performance. The music makes me want to sing. The music is a joy to bring. Music is my heart and soul. It's more precious than gold. Turn on some music. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Just like you Uh-huh, yeah, 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 no doubt Word up Oh, baby Just like you To relax my mind so I can be free and absorb the sound that keep me round Doing my thing constantly with no worries Peace to keep merry uh, Just like you To keep me flowing, to keep me going To keep me growing, to keep me to eat from knowing What happens out there is not my concern You wanna die, it's not my turn Just like you High energy, born with the wisdom Sense of a rich man, knowledge and the rhythm This is what I'm using to come up with a style So I'll interact together better with the crowd nervous for a second and the record starts spinning and i fall into the state of matter what i've just created pumping like the doctor d into the re suckers ready to leap up on the tip when we made it created so i'll never be regarded as a regular more than just a little bit better than my competitor you should never underestimate the fashion i hope for the stage whether i'm cooling or thrashing clocking the concoction created by me when red you read d equals a d o to the c 
Knowledge and the talent that my mother had born Now her equals an artist, I won't be warned What is that, Dre? It's the formula How they touch the heart, but when I touch the heart, I make it brighter black because I'm brighter black, and I'm so black, I'm bright, shine through the blackest night. Shine when I'm live, shine via satellite. Born in the streets of my hood, when you die, on some crop, it gets pop, while others choose the one that's why. It's like a ticket, such an early age. A young brother who lived in a rage died by the cage. He used to hustle on the street corners. His mom would always beg him to quit, but he didn't want him. As he got older, he got even worse. Till a real dealer showed him the purpose of a hurt. A cold night in his hood, he had a tangle The brother he was quabbling with had broken his ankle Laid him out in the driveway Some people knew we wouldn't survive But hey, I ain't the one to speak up on another All I can do is try to open his eyes and help the brother He chose the wrong way and that's the route he took Born and brought up as a major, but he died as a cook He had a baby that he couldn't raise And she will never... Taking life as a game Growing up against the law But no one knows who's to blame Dealing drugs on the corner You don't have to but you wanna A meal is hard to make But you tell yourself you're gonna Dealing 12 to 12 Day into evening I wonder how you continue to be breathing The meal is made and it's time to chill You buy the black Mercedes Benz With the gold to the grill Who's in up the ab While your friends get jealous They find out You quickly get restless You buy a gun It doesn't help but hurt you Because your so-called friend Ratted on you you're in the pen serving 10 to 20 Your boy has snatched your girl and put use to your money You're out 15, but what does it mean? You're just a wasted young brother who lost it all on the dream What's going on? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Give it up for the DJs on the ones and the twos and the Serato with the Marvin Gaye remixes. And now I'd like to introduce Mazi Mutafa. He's the executive director of Words, Beats, and Life to tell you a little bit more about his organization. So uh, real quick, can we get another round of applause for the DJs? So 
Just a little bit of information. Uh, these are some of our, our newer students. They've actually been in the program for about a year. We're really excited that not only do we come uh, and teach young people or give them access to technology and information in terms of the arts, but we promote the pursuit of a post-secondary education. Really excited about some of our DJ students being at uh, colleges around the country studying mechanical engineering, nursing, etc. Uh, as an organization, we run an after-school program called the DC Urban Arts Academy. If you're interested, if you have a young person in your life or you are a young person ages 5 to 23 and you're interested in either DJing, graffiti, emceeing, or b-boying, just send us an email at enroll at wblinc.org. If you can't remember that, just remember the name of the group. Check out our website. All classes are free, offered Monday through Friday in different locations throughout the city. Once again, can we give another round of applause to the DJs? And I'm sure it goes without saying, but the music that you all just heard were a, a number of examples of hip-hop artists who've sampled Marvin Gaye. And that's a big part of DJing, is discovering music and recreating it. Hip-hop is so much about recreating. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mozzie. The DJs are a little shy. That's why they like to be behind the turntables. Unlike the poets, who like to be all up on the mic. The poets and the MCs. So before we get to our finale, um, we thought it'd be fun to do a little challenge. DJ versus tap dancer. So we're gonna bring back Kosi Dunn, um, who you heard earlier, our tapping poet. Yeah. I'd just like to say they can't see me. Much love. <laughs> yeah, wait, y'all bring some, bring some. And at the end, you all get to vote on who the winner is. We'll do it Apollo style. All right, they're gonna try to mess him up. We'll see what happens. dancers forever united so that was fun that was really cool and uh, so we're gonna wrap up we started out with letters to Marvin and then we also one of the things I wanted to impart to the students uh, particularly our slam poets was this idea that you know a lot of times especially when you're young and you want to talk about politics you feel like you have to be angry you know and you're like I'm gonna tell you about all the things that are wrong with the system and what I said to them is like, that's valid, that's totally valid. But if you listen, if you listen to what's going on, I mean, the groove is just unbelievable. And it's still talking about the same messages. It's a soulful revolution. So we talked about the idea of how we could bring in ideas of peace, love, of dreaming into our revolution and combine them. And so for our finale, we have an ensemble piece titled The Soulful Revolution.
As the world turns, life continues. For thousands of years, the gears of earth have caused, not, have caused so much death while delivering so much life. There's more to living than just being alive or knowing how to survive. I've been told that I am the company I keep. So with all this beauty around me, it shouldn't be hard to feel beautiful. With all the ugliness attached to my environment, it shouldn't be hard to feel gross. But I shake it off with the same ease as knife to butter and carry it with me to show you how strong I am. I have come a long way, going from feeling empty to being full of myself. And the key to continuing the progress as well as achieving success is balancing the imperfections because that strengthens the circle of life, allowing the revolution to carry on. Success is my, success is my dominant allele. There are days when I dream of raking green off my yard into the inner city criers, crying for a day when his heartache will end. Just give them music. Give them something to make their souls dance, even though they are broken and waiting to be crazy glued back together because the hammer rang down on the heart, shattering it into a million red pieces, waiting to be melted into blood that one day my dominant allele will wipe clean. I dream of things that may be, of braiding my daughter's hair. I dream of harmonicas and wood floors, of a home among bricks and alleys that slant and split and welcome. I dream of coffee and habichuelas, of orange walls and seven billion tiny photographs, of people, seas of them, all open-faced, of record players and the locks of loved ones grown three times their length. These dreams won't all be realized. Some boys' braids will stop growing long before I dream they should. Maybe my own belly will empty of breath before it ever has the chance to, to grow. But some dreams will stretch out. Some woman's hair will reach her knees. And even if my life is foreshortened, I will be content. Because the beauty is in the unfolding, the breaking of dreams and the growing. Yeah. And I'm get up and hold hearted. Yeah. Words can't describe what I'm feeling. If the truth is concealed, then life must be revealing. Knowledge I should be wielding so my dome don't compel when assassin bullets tear through my skull shieldings. Representing the yieldings of the dreams of children, God's children, the ones who live in project buildings with so many killings where they say the limits from the flow to the ceiling, meaning they on the inside beaming out. So when they're young and about to crush the doubt, so a shorty won't be something simple as a doctor, they deeming he's only dreaming. But deep in, they themselves are still believing. Even through the grieving, people stay scheming. Asiatic child, know you a black star glistening, we listening. So show us who you are. Don't play the hand you're given if you gotta change your cards. Learn from the last generation's mistakes, otherwise we'll make ours. Take it to heart, a new life can start for us and those who follow. Otherwise, our existence is hollow. Do you remember being held by your mother? Wondering what your life would cover? What you would go through, the victories, the hardships, the heartaches, the heartbreak, the love, the sadness, the happiness, and all the above? What you discover over your time on this earth, all that was one of the birth. A law's the first one watching. One day your life will flash before your eyes. Make sure it's something worth watching. Hmm. You explain to us that your father is love and love is breath, and breath is life. But what you meant was that you just wanted to love us all under the same kind of love. In the back left corner of my Spanish class, the light tends to flicker. And I seem to be the only one interested while the class learns new vocabulary words. Did you know the Spanish word for star? Is estrella, estrella, estrella. 
What if I was an astray, or maybe a strayer whose only goal is to leave behind a legacy, a light, a new light, just like what that back left light needs, something new, hope maybe. So when I die, I hope to be an astraya. When a star dies, its light continues to shine for millennia. Its, its, glow, reaching, it's glow reaching us long after its first release. Marin's music, a soulful revolution. So I plan to live forever. And a day. And some change. Like, I plan on being changed, lost in the pockets of every tap dancing, hip hopping, beatboxing artist on these streets. Like, I plan to be on these streets for a long time. In, in the wind, in the voice of every ever too friendly homeless man smiling for six pence in conversation, I want my voice to be a home for him. For you, for us, I want to be a home, Marvin. One with two brick wall of a foundation, laughing at any voice that dare mocks my palms, its capacity to hold. And for what reason, I plan to be both broken and impenetrable simultaneously, for the right reasons. For everyone to realize how open and love and music strength can be if stood up properly. I plan to stand proper, but be something to stand on or for or against, and I'll never fall. So lay me back first on the lay me back first on the grass, and we will play I Spy the Skies. Can you see what I see? Millions of stars I still pray to, Marvin. I've listened to you dream. A hop, skip and a jump away from revolution. If this time they don't listen to the album, then maybe the clouds. You know, when you say your marriage vows, they're supposed to be for real. I mean, if you think back about what you really said, you know. Dear Marvin, did anyone ever send you a news update to Purgatory to let you know that your brother Frankie's war recollections have become somebody else's bedtime stories? What's up? Mr. Bumba. I heard a revolution was coming. Like Congos and Jim Bays in the middle of the street, the Million Man March was here again, and you all were the leaders of it, as if when June said we are the change we've been waiting for, she was talking about you. Yeah. You, and you too, see, it takes a whole lot more effort to do something than it does to do nothing, so let's defy ours together. Break barriers that no man, woman, or law can make to keep us out, see, for far too long. We've been kept out, too busy complaining, to make change, too busy blaming, to realize that they've been judging us on how we look on paper for years now, but somehow nothing is ever as simple as black and white. Humble beginnings make for greater endings, so come join me. Treat the universe like a rebirth of the revolution, much like our allegories and figments, non-existent but never-ending. I want to be never-ending like the world. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Never ending. Let's give it up for the DC Youth Slam Poetry Team. Take a bow. Let's give it up for the DJs from Words, Beats, and Life. Give it up for yourselves for coming out here. This has been Letters to Marvin, a soulful revolution. Let the revolution, the soulful revolution continue with you. Good night, everybody.